Well, 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 well. Look who we found. <laughs> Look who we found. Oh, my goodness. It's great. Great to have the old boy back here. If there were a fourth guy and three guys before the game, it'd be him. All right. No question. It might be the third guy. Yeah. <laughs> I think at one point he did more shows than Hoppy. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Three Guys Before the Game, episode 471. And our special guest is our old boy, Nathan Adrian. He is back from the mother country after a successful run in Italy this past season, all the way to the championship series. We'll talk with him about that. Talk with him about his new line of camouflage clothing, which he is. He's got the full uniform. <laughs> He's, he, he can play basketball with you or get your tree stand set up. Whatever way you want to do it, he can exactly. take care of that. Thanks for being with us, everyone. Three Guys Before the Game is brought to us by the Burdette Camping Center, the only warranty forever dealer in the state of West Virginia. You buy it. Has that changed? Was Were we doing Burdette Camping when you were a regular on the show? Of course, the end of it. Towards the end of it, yeah, yeah. I know your mic is. Uh, I know your mic needs Viagra over there. Could you? It's a little flimsy. Could you, get it could up you a little more? Kind of crank it. Just yeah. Can we get the technical staff over here? Hoppy's going to fix it. So three guys before the game brought to us by the Burdett Camping Center, continuing to offer. Let me shut that microphone off for a second. Uh, unbelievable offer, ten thousand American dollars off on the Forest River Travel Trailer and Toy Hauler. $10,000 off. So if you be in the market, they're ready for you. And the warranty, no matter what you buy, lasts forever. Three guys brought to us by Comax Business Systems. You know, Comax is not your local copier guy. They can take care of all of your business and equipment needs, your business data digital phone systems from one line to a thousand lines west virginia based west virginia owned west virginia 25 plus years they're the ones that you need to go to keeping west virginia's business data safe secure and efficient for 25 years three guys brought to us by lou wendell marine sales in st albans they do sell family fun premier pontoon boat dealer in the state of west virginia Visit LouWendellMarineSales.com. You pontoon last uh, weekend? We did. How'd and on the 4th. Very Pont- nice. I'll have some pictures for you later in the show. Beautiful Cheat Lake. Excuse me? Beautiful pictures of Cheat Lake we took. You got pictures of pontoon. pontooning? Well, sure, out on the lake. Well, sure I do. Sure. Well, if you're there in the market. right there. there are, there's the Lou Wendell Marine Sales. Right Visit LouWendellMarineSales.com. Nice, nice, nice. Three guys also nice. brought to us by That's GoMart. Nice. Well, you're going on a trip, aren't you, Nathan? Coming out, you're going to be traveling this next couple of days? I'll be traveling down to Beckwith. Probably need a little gas. I mean, you can stop down at GoMart, where during the summer cryptid quest, GoMart reward members can reward themselves and get points faster with specially marked items. And you can unlock the cryptids along the way. You get all seven of the cryptids, you get 5,000 bonus points. Then you redeem your extra reward points for savings on gas. Cash in on these deals. Make sure you're a registered GoMart Rewards member. To do that, you just go to GoMart.com for the details. Sign up, get the card. I did I did really quick math with just like a pencil. I didn't lay it out. I think if you get all seven of the cryptid things there at GoMart, that earns you enough reward points for enough gas to drive to Italy. <laughs> I have to, I'll have to do the rest of it. I just kind of yeah, just scratched it yeah. out there. But I think that's what it is. How are you, big boy? I'm doing good, buddy. How are you? Good. It's nice to have you back. Good. Glad to be home. It was a pretty long run. You left last August, and you didn't come back until a couple of weeks ago. June right? 25th. You were. That's a run. That's a run. That's the longest I've been over there by at least a month. And hey, look at him. He's worn to a nub. I mean, what do you mean by that? I mean, he's lost weight. That's the first thing I noticed about him. He's lost weight. I mean, it was a long season. I thought you could have asked that more diplomatically when you did that before the show started. I agree. What did I say? Right. Kind of asked if I was sick, didn't he? Yes, exactly <laughs> right. Exact how it came out. Like, oh, hey, Nate, are you okay? You did. did I? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm used to people asking me that after they look at it because <laughs> I have a light green complexion. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. I mean, that's a grind. All I was suggesting was, Nate, and you agreed, it's a grind. No, it definitely is. And it's hard for me to keep weight on during the year, so. 11 months of it, I get, 
don't have much time to put it back on. But, dude, isn't that a good problem? I mean, in the sense that, that when you're done playing, that's going to be a good problem. Well, when I'm done playing, yes. I'll be back here yeah. not working out. <laughs> then they'll be, I'll be back on me. <laughs> So you're at 225 right now. 225. You went over there 235. 235. Yeah. So this was your longest stay. So how, okay. So do the math for us now. How many? So you've been how many places now? France, Ukraine, and Italy twice. France, Ukraine, so forth. So you just finished your fourth season. Fourth season. Okay, let's put that in perspective. Can we put this in perspective? The little <laughs> kid, the little kid over there from Grafton Road, that went to South, that went to the high school, <laughs> over there went to the high school. Then he went to the college over here. The university. Went, well, yeah, I went over to the university there. And now he's just finished his fourth season as a professional basketball player. All internationally. Pretty good deal. Living overseas. Pretty it's good hard, deal. It's hard to beat getting paid to play basketball. Well, I understand <laughs> that, is. but you've got to rem- – you, now, will you, will you admit to us – I mean, we had our concerns because there was the generalized belief before you began your professional career – <laughs> that you pretty much had a radius like <laughs> by the time like if you got to like lost creek right if you got to lost creek then you were like i'm way too far away from home i got to get back i'm pretty sure there's a poll going around town of what date i'd come back that first year <laughs> <laughs> not many people had the whole year you know it's like a it's a it's a there's a so the overhead on the, the, the overhead, overhead yeah not many people had that nathan say nathan would say i'll go anywhere at all i'll go anywhere at all but i gotta be home by wednesday <laughs> <laughs> so what change do you think that allowed you to go from i'm not sure if i want to leave west virginia to i just spent 10 plus months 10 and a half months over in italy well you just got to do it. I mean, it's pretty simple when you say it like that, but once you leave and you know you can't come back, I was never raised to quit anything, so I knew I wasn't going to quit it. And then you just kind of get used to being over there. Now mm-hmm. it's pretty comfortable for me. Were there moments there in France, though, that you thought, uh, this isn't exactly what I thought it was going to be? Yeah, those first two weeks where you're sitting over there by yourself, doing yeah. nothing all day, and then come home for Christmas, and it's real nice, and then you got to get back on a plane and go back over. Yeah. And that trip, I had a two and a half layover at a train station outdoors in January. <laughs> <laughs> there was a moment of what there am I doing? There was a moment I was like, well, this train's going the other way. <laughs> <laughs> Do you so, fit into a coach seat when you fly, or do you fly first class? No, I fly in coach. Um, anytime there's an upgrade under $1,000, I do it, though. <laughs> Good call. Yeah, it's not comfortable. I, I mean, that's a, that's, a, that's a ride. That's a ride. So you had a really good season this year with this team. First year that you were with this particular team, you guys ran it through all the way to the championship, huh? Yep, ran through the championship. We uh, finished the regular season in first place. Um, I think we exceeded anybody's expectations for the team. So it was, it was a good year for me to get back after having surgery last summer. The, do you guys get a bonus for winning the league? For winning the league, you get one. Get a little bit. You get a bonus for every round win in the playoffs. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, good. So you made a little bit, a little bit extra. Made a little extra money. Um, walk us, remind us the surgery that you had last off season and how you feel. Uh, I, Double sports hernia, so on both sides, I'd get them both fixed. Um, They don't bother me at all anymore. Awesome. Awesome. Any hesitation on it when you started back, or were you full go once you were ready? Uh, I mean, once I got back into working out, you could tell it was still tight, but that's just healing from surgery. Anytime you get surgery, it takes a while to trust your body to be able to do what it was supposed to do. So by the time I got to the season, I think a month in, I was – Forgot about it and turned it loose. Just forgot about it. We're, as you know, probably Nate here on this program, we're always very complimentary of the officiating of all sports. But I was looking at a stat in the championship series. What? When you all played Vinoli Cremona. That's right. Vinoli Cremona. And in the third game. I had that for dessert last night. I know. In the third game of that series, they shot, Brad, they shot 29, not them, Vinoli shot 29 free throws. Okay. And Forley. His team was called for 25 fouls. Hmm. I mean, what were you all getting hosed there or what? Uh, Go ahead. You can say it now. You can, yeah, say, I can it say it now. I guess it doesn't really matter. Your fishing was horrible all year. <laughs> was it? <laughs> oh, my God. You couldn't figure Both out. Both ways or against you? I would define that. Both ways, usually. Yeah. Sometimes against us. I never say for us. Um, I would never say that, <laughs> even if it was. <laughs> but, um, but they shot 29 free throws in that game. Yeah. They were. We were also shooting a lot of threes because we got down early. So I'll give them that. 
Um, yeah, guys just, hanging on you or what? Yeah. Yeah. It was one of those things, if you're any bigger, they can do whatever you want to you. But I as soon that. as you hit back, bow. <laughs> and then any European, you get all the flopping and somebody throws a head back, that's a bow. <laughs> You think Truck's been over there, Truck Bryant? And he teach him the head flop? I'm sure he yeah. can you, pretty good I mean, at it. Yeah, yeah, what he you, was good at it. Can you interact with the officials? They don't like it. They oh, really? Not, they don't, no, they don't like when I talk to them. Oh, you really? You talk to them in a little English, they don't like it. <laughs> Did you get teed this year? One. Oh. First one since high school. Oh, <laughs> really? What really? happened? All right, set it up. What happened? Nothing. <laughs> well, something. What do you mean, what do you mean, I mean nothing? Not, I didn't do anything. Something. I didn't do anything. I made a shot, got fouled, looked at the ref under the basket, and just yell, come on. And the ref at the top of the key teed me up. Oh, God. Jeez. One even the guy I was talking to. Did you go hands extended after you oh, got the always. tee? <laughs> oh, come I, on. Hand, hands were up always. in the air before the tee. <laughs> <laughs> One of those. Always. <laughs> That's Jeez. The ref at the top of the key knew English? I don't know. I didn't even cuss. I just said, yo, know, come just, on. In his face? No. Did you like getting to take a step towards Not the guy? Running backwards. Showing up the official. Yeah. Had you been lippy all game? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Upon further questioning. <laughs> so what's their de- what's what's the officials demeanor like compared to American officials? Are they They're standoffish? They are. Yeah. By the time my four years in college, I could I mean at the same time I knew all the rest by my fourth year. Right. So I could talk to them. Sure. They would talk back to me mm-hmm. over there, you say something, they're not they're not helping you out. You ask my question. They're not explaining anything to you. So they'll they'll, they'll give you the stone wall when you ask a question. Yeah. Like, hey, what'd you have over there? Yeah. There's nothing. Nothing. How uh, how well did the uh, coach, your head coach, speak English? Good. So yeah. No, no he issues really there. Good. And he was a good coach. I had a good time with him. He's probably probably my favorite coach I've had ever seen. So Why? Far. What did he do that you liked? Uh just a very. He was young. He was active. Um, got into the games a lot. Um, very animated coach. Which most Italians are, but right. Where was he know. from in Italy? What part do you know? I don't know. Okay. How was uh, how was Fabio Valentini at getting you the ball? Good. Fabio's <laughs> a good point guard. Yeah. Okay, just checking. <laughs> That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> so, he's so proud of himself for that. <laughs> so, so the city that I'm you guys, <laughs> the city that you guys were representing, is how big? Uh, I think it was sixty thousand. Okay, maybe a little more. So like a Morgantown sized yeah, city, not a big place, right? And you'd get uh, people got into this thing. People right? got into it. We had, uh, I think, our arena hold, held five thousand to fifty five hundred. We'd have at least four to forty five hundred a game, right? And when and play- there there are what active people. What does that mean? That means it doesn't matter if they're young, old. They're standing up, screaming, double birds to the refs. <laughs> oh, good. The whole game. Are, they're not, are, they don't whistle, do they? That's not, they don't whistle no, on bad no, calls. They're no. not whistlers. They're more. No, no, uh, they're more. Do we have yeah. drums and stuff? Yeah. Clappers, those drums, sort of things? Yeah, drums, Heavy drums. Horns. We had flares. Flares? <laughs> oh, my God. The last flares? game. Flares? Wait a minute. Like, was talking about. Flares? Yeah, flares. The last game, That's not it was 93 idea. degrees out. There's no air conditioning. <laughs> the gym has no air conditioning? No, nowhere has air conditioning. Oh. So it's 100 degrees in the gym with 5,000 people in there. And then the second half, they started lighting flares off at one end. And it felt like an oven. <laughs> <laughs> like, the t- like what do you mean? The team the had flares? No, the, the fans. fans. The fans. fans. Just lighting flares and put Does them on the ground. Does anyone notice that's a fire Well, no has wonder no the one. officials are standoff. <laughs> they probably think people are coming at them with stuff. Oh, one got lighting punched. Lighting people on fire? I mean, what's going on One over got there? punched walking off the court. Well, see. <laughs> really? Well, doesn't want you running his mouth. At uh, one of your games? Yeah. The second game of the championship. Is that right? Someone mm-hmm. came out and got. Someone came out. And took someone a leaned sh- over the rail and took a shot. Uh, we do not condone that here on do three not. guys before the game. That is or not complain about not. the officials. We're right? shooting flares at them. So we yeah. Oh, well, they're they're road flares. They're not shooting them. They're just road <laughs> flares. <laughs> they're, just, they're, just, they're just fires. So what do they get? Yeah. So yeah, when you're on the road, road what do they get after you? Because you're the leading scorer, so they're on you, right? Pretty well, hard. I don't understand them, so I don't care. <laughs> well, I think you get the general idea. I of what get the saying. idea, but what, what's it matter to me if I don't know what they're saying? So good. Do they? So you get the ball. Do they give you the instant <laughs> boo? You know how like they they do that? No, like, not much boos. They don't not target boos. It's more of a more of a screaming at you. <laughs> <laughs> why wouldn't you enjoy that, right? I mean, why wouldn't you? Well, enjoy that's it? the perfect. Thanks for yeah. having us. Yeah, oh, I mean, you got to remember, right? they're, like the road fans. There's a cage around there. They're in a cage. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, they're in a cage. Like a chain link fence yep. cage. 
in front of the fan. The fans are enclosed yeah, in a I'm cage. I'm saying the or behind one of the baskets there is a cage, <laughs> and that's where they they have an ex, a separate door. They bring them in through the separate door, and they're in a cage. Who's them? The fans? The opposing team's fans. When they come on the road. Oh, my gosh. When they come on the road, right, Nate? Yeah, when okay. they come to our gym. When they the come road. to your gym, they're inside of a cage. Yeah. So for their own fans, protection. For their own protection. Jeez. Yeah. And fans climbed that fence one time. <laughs> to get it's in nuts. the cage? Yeah. Because and a cage those... match ensued. Yeah. Oh, you have riot police at every game? Really? Yeah. Or Carbonari. Is that what they are? The yeah. Carbonari? Allen Fieldhouse, no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. Not worry about Allen Fieldhouse. <laughs> yeah. Flares, Easy. Tr- cages. Flares? What the hell? Well, yeah, they do that. I mean, they'll light fireworks. Well, flares? Some pl- it's South, South America, they'll light fire. They'll get a big pack of fireworks. They'll just light them off. Gr- Greg Lorenz came to one of my games. This year? Yep. Okay. Towards the end, he got in trouble because two women in front of him got in a fight, and he videoed it. <laughs> And, and they caught him. <laughs> and she came up and yelled at him, <laughs> took his phone and deleted it. <laughs> well, Greg just wanted to show it on the in-circuit TV he at Kegler's. He just wanted to show everybody. Yeah, Kegler's. They just, instead of just showing the game, they need a second camera shot just showing the fans. Well, they are. Okay. Do you have any t-shirt tosses or anything? You know? <laughs> Shoot up shopping cart shootouts? Nothing. Like settle somebody down? <laughs> no? There's no fan interaction. <laughs> they, don't have the, they don't have the shopping cart shootout? Burger hasn't made it yet. I'm, he- I'm heading back over with you. We're going to start that. We're going to take that to your Somebody new Somebody throw a flare in your buggy. <laughs> get you an NIL deal over there for the Kroger shopping cart shootout. I told him I'm going to get the three guys in my jersey somewhere for a TBT. Oh, oh. Be good. Yeah, that'd be, we, yeah, that'd be all right, right? Yeah, we'd be fine with that. Yeah. Or I, I said, if they yeah. say hey, you can't have it on your jersey, he's just going to get a fake tattoo. It's going right on my arm. Even better. Like, like so, he's at the like, <laughs> hey, right here. Like, put it right here. So when he goes <laughs> to the foul line, they give you that. I yeah. love it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll negotiate. I love it. So now you're back here. You were in Vegas last weekend. <laughs> I was in Vegas, running around, huh? Running around, it's me and Lydia. Yeah. So what's Lydia doing now? But for she, those that don't know, Lydia is is, is actually a better athlete than Nate. Uh, <laughs> sister uh, graduated from Morgantown High in WVU. Go four ahead. Four-time state champ. Four-time four state times. champion. I knew she was a champion. Yeah, yeah four times. Good. That's pretty good. Yep. So what's she, she doing? Just graduated PA school from. Yeah. Up on the hill in West Liberty. Liberty. West Liberty. <laughs> <laughs> up on the hill in Willie. He gave you an up on the hill. Yeah, I've been in Italy for a while. A little rusty on his geography. We got it. Yeah. West Liberty. She, up on the hill it. in Wheeling. Got it. It's close enough. And yeah. she's moving to Nashville. Really? Yep. Just to hang out in Nashville. Well, Pete, there's hope so she many, finds a job. So many people in Nashville. That's the thing. Nashville's blown up in it. Oh, yeah. yeah it's place to be for young people now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you consider yourself young? No. You're no, done. No. I'm done. You're done. You felt that when you were in Vegas yeah, last Vegas week? Yeah, Vegas was my last run. I looked at her on the third day and was like, I can't do it anymore. Hey, Where'd they you... had that big giant sphere up yet? Nope. That wasn't up Two yet? You just missed that? Yep. Just you guys missed. seen that thing? No. It's impressive. What is it? It's unbelievable. Taylor, if you can find that real quick while we're talking about this. Vegas just unveiled this gigantic sphere that's like all LED, so they change it out. They've had it looking like a basketball for the summer league. They have it looking like an eye the other day that follows it's him. It's, it's unbelievable how this looks. And apparently, I think, from what I read, the inside's the same thing. So they, when they do concerts, the whole dome is a light display. Oh, my gosh. Not just what they bring. Yeah. That's pretty wild. Yeah, they're, so they're going to do concerts in there. They say the acoustics are perfect. State-of-the-art facility. But the outside's all LED. You can see it from – it's wow. it's massive. Aren't we He'll supposed find to go there? Yeah. Yeah, for about five years now. Yeah, but he – He can't get it done. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse I've me. I've been saying for five years we got to be in Vegas for shows. We're still not in Vegas for shows. We are going to Greenbrier County. <laughs> well, it's a start. What? There's a casino. Takes, yeah. takes one man with courage. We are going down to Greenbrier County. Hold on real quick. Oh, Here's this thing. Right there. If you're watching on the, the video portion, that's – okay, that's not even as – that you can't even tell what that is yet. Just wait. There you go. Now you're starting to see it a little bit. Wait till they draw back on this thing. It's huge. Two point three billion dollars. Is it uh, okay? So even that, that's like okay, that's fine. It's on the strip. Ye- no, off I don't the strip. Think it's off the strip. Well, you can see it's off, off the strip. strip. Yeah, but wait till it goes into like a basketball, and the the eye is freaky. Oh, look at this thing! Wow. But look at the road going right by. Look how big the thing is. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's big. We got things. So you what, just what missed that, that mirage right behind it. Yep. And I forget the property. It's on MGM built it, but it's not on an MGM property, but they're partners in the in the project. 
But it's uh, like inside. It's an event place. It's an event. Yeah, it's, it's like, like an event center. Yeah, be for concerts. Yeah. Oh, and apparently the, the whole inside is just like that. So the whole concert is going to be lit up. But you just missed that. You didn't just get to see it. it. Interesting. Okay. Anyway, moving along. Yeah, well done. How do you have a lot of knowledge about that? Well, he's he's Vinny Vegas over there. Why wouldn't he know? No, he's not Vinny. Well, ha- yeah. I mean, he what? helps. I mean, he's in the industry. Well, he is in the industry. This is what I'm tells me. His boys gave him a heads up. Hey, this is what tells me that he's not at the elite level of the NBA uh, scout because if he was really at the NBA scout level, all he does now is just scout college guys. He they don't send him to Vegas. They don't send him to Vegas. If you if you really had like that, how your, do you know I haven't had an opportunity to go to Vegas? But I've said no because of the show responsibilities. How do you know that? Nah, uh, you would have gone. <laughs> Probably you would. You, you would have gone. I'd be sitting here with you clowns. You would have gone. So when's Fair your point. when's your decision come as to where you net. where do you play next year? Uh, soon, year, hopefully. Year five. Year five. And year pro, five. Where, where are we going? Year I mean, five. Well, Don't you, know where I'm going yet. Um, still waiting for my passport, my Italian passport, um, which is supposed to come. Well, we have a hearing October 10th, so hopefully that all gets pushed through pretty quick, and I have that for the year. Like is all the documentation in now. We're just Dual waiting citizen. on getting that stamped. I'm waiting for the hearing. Okay. Dual citizen. I know. I think oh, that's awesome. I like that a lot. Yeah, that helped me a lot. So, not real sure about next year yet. Got some options. We're working real, on some options. Real quick, go back. Because that, then you don't have to count as an American against the limit, right? When you're a dual citizen or so, not necessarily? It, it depends on the country. In Italy, I would count as a European, not as an Italian. So, what that does is it still counts against the six non-Italians you're allowed to have okay. on the team. But that doesn't count as a visa. So what it is is they're only limited to six visas they're allowed to get. So and if I if I don't take a visa, they can essentially have room to make a move if they want to. Does it get you any more money or not necessarily? Yeah. It, does. Oh, it does. Oh, okay, good. And you had you had three Americans on your team. Two, two, two in the second division. Okay. And you can have, is there a limit on number of Americans or just non-Italians? Just non-Italians. Okay. You develop any language skills yet? Some. I could get through a conversation. I cool. couldn't speak it. I could understand what they were saying. Cool. Yeah. Cool. It's you pretty. It's a pretty language. It's hard. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's all. Yeah. I mean, it's probably in the middle. I'm sure there's harder ones, but. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty. It's pretty. Um, we talked to you about this before. The the uh, the Ukrainian situation. You've got to look at that and just go like, oh my gosh. Yeah. I try not to look at it too much. Because you were in Ukraine. I was right? in Ukraine. Were you Kiev? Yeah. Were you in Kiev? No, I was in Nikolai, yeah. way down south on the Black Sea. Yeah. Near Crimea? Is that near Crimea? Uh, it's west of it. Okay. Think about that. I mean, just think about that. All right? So you've been to France, you've been to Ukraine, now Italy twice, and, uh, and wherever else you go here. So, all right. So. Hold on. Are we now talking food? Yeah. I mean, we've got to get a food update every time it comes back. And so lemon where, trees updates. Where are we at with this food? Where I was this year was a lot better. So last year I was way down south. It was a lot of, well, it was better for me. A lot of fish, a lot yeah. of white pastas. Right. This year I was up near Bologna. Right. Which is. Meaties. M- more meat. A lot of prosciutto, a lot yeah. of. Yeah. A lot of salami, sausage. A lot yeah. of sausage, a lot yeah. of that stuff. Yeah. Um, Red sauce. Yeah. Um. They got, well, they're not a fight. Bologna and Forli. Forli is, they call them Capoletti. Uh huh. Bologna has tortellini. Yeah. Pasta wars. I'm going to say they're the same thing, but if you say that there, they're not. <laughs> they get all very, very, all fired up. Very regional about that. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like, yeah. They're yeah. noodles stuffed with meat and cheese. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was good. What was your favorite dish? It's called Strasapretti Pasticciati. Okay, what do we got in it? Little, I mean, they're noodles, um, little spiral noodles with uh, it's a meat sauce. It's an orange meat sauce with sausage in it. Okay, okay, yeah, that was my go-to. Yeah, so that area there is, is the is the is the like he said, those heavier meats, pork meats. One restaurant you frequent in, frequented. We had probably five that I frequented this year. I had a little rotation going this year. Very good. Wines they everything. knew when you walked in. Yeah, yeah, I knew what I was getting. <laughs> <laughs> Did you go out to eat most days? Uh, it depends. When I was alone, no. When I'm alone, I cook. 
um, when Lucky's there, we go out to eat most most nights. Um, then when my friends are there, I come. We, we have a wedding date set, by the way. Speaking no, of Lucky, not what? yet. What are we doing? Uh, it's going to be a random day somewhere in Italy. <laughs> That's what it's going to end up being. Gave us a random day, like maybe on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. Just a random Tuesday. <laughs> all right, fine. I'd go with that. I'd go with that. Um, all right. So, how long before you know where you're going? Hopefully soon. Most years I've been waiting around till August. I don't want to do that again. Mm-hmm. So, if we get a good enough deal, come across. I'm I'm not going to wait around this year. And you are TBT in it. I am. Excellent. Wow. Aren't you tired? I don't have a choice. I mean, I'm either playing TBT or working out. It's not much different. There you uh, go. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Hoppy, he's a professional athlete. It's not like he goes to summer school. I mean, this guy, he's got to play ball. I took my week off. He's ready. Okay. He's ready. He feels physically, he feels good. What's your, what's your, uh, um, I mean, what, what is, how marketable are you now? I mean, you've had you're four years going to the fifth year. You're the leading scorer on the team, 15, some 16 points a game. You all had a great year. So are you a pretty marketable guy in the whole European league? Where do you, yeah. what, where are you? Um, so the way it works, I'm very marketable in the second division again. I mean, there's a few teams that want me to come play for them in that league. To get back to the first league, they're basically going to make you do another prove it year oh. and offer me like the same money I made last year. Um, which you kind of just have to do if you want to get back up to that league. Um, but then there's other markets. I'm like looking around in Japan. Really? Yeah. What? Some different stuff. Um, oh, Japan. Yeah. Never How do you heard. find that stuff? Do you have an agent that I have finds an agent. those things? Yeah, I have, a, I have an American agent, then I have a Greek agent who they work all the European markets and Asian markets, and they find all that stuff for me. Wow, so Japan, so that's a serious option. Yep. I think uh, while I'm waiting for this passport still, I'd like to go see what else is out there for a year. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. Kevin Jones has loved Japan. Everyone right? I know has gone to Japan loves Japan. They love it. Money's pretty good, right? Money's better. Money's better. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Money's better. Yep. You'll have That'll be great. That'll be good. That time difference will... Time difference. I think it's thirteen hours. Yeah, I think it's certain areas. Uh, that's a that's a pretty good thing. He told me earlier today. You know, tell him your tell him your snow uh, your snow trivia on Japan. Well, this is a Kevin Adrian. <laughs> oh, Kevin, fact. your dad. What this is he? A dad fact. You're questioning this. There's I'm a he- not questioning heavy, it. There's a heavy disclaimer coming up. Front. There's it. a heavy disclaimer. Well, my let family, me just tell you. My now, family's anyway. known for throwing out facts. <laughs> air quotes. Air quotes on that. Yeah. Uh, apparently, Kevin right in the crosshairs here. <laughs> Japan gets Hi, Kevin, the, welcome to the show. most snow per square mile of any country in the world. Huh? Yeah, he said it. I'm gonna. Ch- I'm double checking that. Say it again. Speak. Japan most has the most snow, snow per, per square, square mile, mile of anywhere. Of anywhere. Must be true. That's Kevin, not my quote. Kevin, Kevin Adrian. Adrian quote. Kevin Adrian said it. It must be true. I'm going with it. Kerchival efforting. Yeah. See, Google ruined my family. Yeah, well, because I used to throw stuff out. <laughs> you used to throw stuff out. No one checked say it. Say with confidence. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, boy. Oh, boy. Well, not even in the top ten. That'd be a fun experience. Yeah, here we go. What? Not even in the top ten. Yeah. You might have heard of the country called Switzerland. Yeah, Kevin. See, I questioned it when he said it. I you was like, there's no way. Kevin may have missed on that one. Switzerland, Finland. Austria, Norway, Sweden, Russia, Finland, Iceland. Yeah, Greenland. Uh, let me see. That's a big country. Though. Uh, Bulgaria, Albania, Romania. I mean, Japan's not not not. Even... Now, Kevin wouldn't just throw that out. Kevin got Maybe it, it was somewhere. in Asia. Yeah, what, he might have answer? closed it in Asia. I Maybe it was in Asia. Go at the Asian continent. Have the most? What'd you ask it? Most? Which which country has the most snow per square mile? Oh, that's what you asked. Which I think is what Kevin. Yeah. Uh, that's what I was told. To. I didn't know if you got the question right. Yeah, we'll move no on. <laughs> We'll move on to further action. Three guys before the game brought to us by Lou Wendell Marine Sales, the largest pontoon boat dealer in West Virginia. (laughs) Family owned for four decades, recognized as a state of uh, West Virginia's experts in pontoon boating and so much more. Biggest dealer in the state, sell the Avalon pontoon boats, manufactured 100% right here in the United States. You can visit their website, LouWendellMarineSales.com. They're in St. Albans, LouWendellMarineSales.com. So, before uh, we started rolling tape, you were over at the basketball practice facility. 
give me your uh, give me your takeaway here. Uh, I think uh, I hope we're past all the departures. Departures. Um, I think if you get a couple more guys in that can hold their own, I think we're going to be solid. I mean, we still have good players. Raekwon's supposed to be great. He went there today. Um, Jesse Edwards is giant and he can move. So I think he's going to have a good year. Um, and there's still guys that are developing this year. I mean, the coaches that they have now are going to be more skill development guys. I mean, you got Deshaun's worked in the NBA. Alex is one of the hardest working guys that came through here and played professionally. And he knows what he's doing. And then if you have Jordan doing ball handling and all that good stuff, then I think with three, four months before the season that they're going to develop them pretty good and we'll we'll see what we can get out there. Josiah Harris, a guy we probably haven't talked enough about. He's got a he's got a shot to be really good. More playing time, he's gonna get more shots, good body, length. Yeah. Right? Harris it, should it, play a role. It, he's gonna to have to play a role. Um I think he's one of those guys that's gonna benefit from the skill development. Um it's still raw. I think he has a chance to be good and I think once he gets through games, gets through these first games playing against lesser yeah, teams yeah. um i think it, once he gets his confidence up i think he'll be solid and he's only a sophomore so he got three more years mm -hmm. and hopefully yeah can shoot <laughs> two from the outside can't even say that anymore no you can't when you look at all of the turmoil as far as i'm not talking about here i'm talking about just the transfer portal and the movement of guys what what, what goes through your mind having not been here all that long ago to see just these guys four and five schools I I just think that they got to do something to get control of it. Um, I know there's some rules on transfers, like you can only transfer once before you graduate and all that, which I don't quite understand how these guys are going to five schools if that's a rule. Um, sure that. No enforcement. Yeah, there's just no enforcement behind it. No um, rules. No rules. I don't know. I don't like it. Uh, if you're going to do it like this, I think you got to start signing contracts. That's the only way anybody's going to be able to build a team. Um, there needs to be a sh shorter cutoff date to when you're transferring. I don't see any reason why it's past May 30th. Two months after the season, I don't understand how you're not – don't know if you're happy or not at school. Mm -hmm. um, people leaving in June, you're just leaving giant holes. And mm -hmm. Obviously, different situations than what we're in. I mean, if something happens like that and a coach has to leave, then you have to give players a chance to leave. I think – I mean, that's always been a thing. If a coach leaves and – you didn't go there. You right. went there to play for a guy. If he leaves, you should be able to go wherever you want to go. But other situations in a normal year, there's got to be more limitations to it. Yeah. It's just crazy right now. As you can what about see. that? What about that you mentioned it, it, signing a contract? Brad, you're all into that. I mean, what about players say, I want, I want you to sign. I want you to come here, but I want you to sign a two-year contract. I think – I don't see any problem with it. I mean, if you're going to pay them like professionals, and that's what they're doing now, you have to treat them like professionals – where you're signing a contract, and if you want to leave, you're paying a buyout. Mm -hmm. you got to give the money back to the school for what they invested in you. Mm -hmm. If you want to get out of your second year, either the team that wants you is going to have to pay the buyout or you're going to have to pay it out of your pocket. I mean, that's the way it just works. If you're making money like that and the school's investing in you like that, there should be some investment back. Yeah, I think it makes sense. Thoughts on that, Mr. Freedom of Movement? Yeah, I've been saying that. They're, it's gonna, they're, they're gonna just, get it in house. You're gonna figure out a way to do something similar to that. Yeah, I've, I've got no issue with that. I've been saying that since the beginning. That's what's coming. What the way it's happening now is, I agree with Nate. It, it's it's unsustainable because you can't, you, you don't know what you have. That's the issue. You don't know what you have as a coach. I get that having to re-recruit twenty four seven is a little much. I am still for player movement. I am still for players getting a cut of the millions, hundreds of millions of dollars that are floating around out there. I think those are all good. You put some guardrails in, but I think eventually it's got to come in house and these schools and these entities have to have the ability to make their own offers. They have to have the ability to make their own deals with these players. I think that's where it's headed. You just got to get everybody on the same page, which I have said many times too. That's the hard part. Getting all of these schools and all the decision makers to agree then move it forward without getting sued and losing. That's the biggest challenge here. It's not the it's not the philosophical part of that. You could sit in a room and come up with that. It's it's the actuality. It's doing it that it's a hard to do. The problem with it is you start. You have all, essentially what it is it's I'm going to say it again. It's a professional players now, but you have 353 professional teams that you have to get to a degree 
onto what it is, unless you break it up into the power five, which that, mid major, yeah, that's what low I'm saying. major no question. And, and then you get each one basically in their own league to agree to something. Okay. And so even then you can't get agreement. You can't get agreement on campuses. True. You go into campuses and find the top five decision makers on the campus and it's hard to get consensus. Then you broaden that out to a league like the big 12. And now you're bringing in 50 or 60 people that all have strong opinions. That's the challenge. Hey, hey, Nate, if you've you... sat in those rooms, you know that is that is where the thing falls down. You can't get everybody to agree what you should do. And the folks in the SEC and the Big Ten aren't interested in what the MAC says. No. No, that's why they need to be separate entities. Okay, and now we're moving to the part where the people in the SEC and the Big Ten rooms aren't interested in what the Pac-12, ACC, and Big 12 have to say. So now that power five or six is becoming less and less. So you're getting more fragmented in this thing, not less. Right. Hey, Nate, do you have – this is going to take it in a direction that I might want to go. Do you have any costs associated with what you do? Do you have to pay for anything? Uh, like? Once I'm there, no. No, no, I don't. Okay. Um, the team covers the apartment. They cover your car, um, plane tickets, essentially everything you need to live there that you can't. I mean, obviously, if you sent me over there to try to find an apartment, I'd have no idea what to yeah. do. So they just they take care of okay. all that. Essentially, what they tell you, but they're not they don't there's no assessment fee off of your salary for you no what the way they negotiate our contracts is net so they only tell what gets to me is the net number now they might negotiate as a gross number which includes your salary taxes plane tickets housing car but what eventually gets to me is the net is the net number. See, but, but probably the gross. There's there's all that stuff factored into the gross. Yeah. And what I'm what I'm trying to get at is, and Brad, you'll probably disagree with this, is that if you're going to play, if you're going to pay college players as professional players or pay them, then they may they may have some obligation to the college, because the college is providing. They're providing this, you know, the classes, the school, they get a scholarship. They're providing the place where they play. They're providing the venue. They're providing the scheduling. They're providing everything else. So if you're going to get paid $500,000 to play college, maybe you owe the college something back. Maybe you got to pay for your tuition. Maybe you got to pay for whatever. So you might, that's, that's what I'm trying to get. At. If you're going to be paid like a professional, you may have some obligation coming back to the entity that is providing that venue for you to earn that money. Oh, okay. 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 You're going to pay me $500,000? Yeah. Okay. 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 That, fine. That's a fair deal. <laughs> well, I'm saying I mean, that, you're making none now. So you're going to pay me five hundred, and I owe 50000 back? Okay. Sold. Done. Sign me up. Good. You're going to pay me 100000 I owe twelve back? Okay. Sign yeah, me well, up. Yeah. Sold. Well, that's fine. I mean, the point being, if you're going to pay somebody $500,000, I don't think they should also get a free scholarship. Uh, Why? Well, I think because there's there's a cost because the university is also is paying that cost to the school. The athletic department is paying that cost to the school. I'm just saying in the professional world, there there is a there you just don't get all the money. There is a cost associated with with what you're able to do that the team is absorbing, and I think you have got to give some of that back. No, tell no. Me. that's tough. I wouldn't no. agree I on the scholarship mean, because you're still. I mean, the school's getting something out of you playing for them. At the end of the day, it's still free advertisement for a school not free obviously you're paying something but the school and a lot of people don't know this the athletic department has essentially nothing to do with the school the like school tuition is not paying anything towards the athletic department yeah, the athletic department is paying for, is paying the school for the scholarship they're, yeah. they're yes. reimbursed yes. yes yes so the university really has nothing to do with the athletic department in that sense so i wouldn't agree that players need to pay their own tuition but they do i mean they do have to pay their own apartment like they're not giving them free apartments unless they have an nil deal with an apartment guy if that makes sense hoppy i think your thesis there based on nate so they'll say okay you're gonna make five hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars well they'll come back and they'll say well it's six hundred thousand gross your net's gonna be five hundred thousand that's how i think those guys would negotiate those deals like if I'm representing a player, I'm going to say, "What's the number?" And you're going to say, "It's five. It's going to be. We're going to pay him uh, six hundred thousand dollars gross, five hundred net." Okay, fine. We'll do that deal. That's what I think will happen. We're not paying you back. Well, okay. Well, the, either way, it's let's say it's five hundred thousand dollars gross, and we're going to subtract tuition. That's fifty thousand dollars. 
want to subtract, uh, whatever, you know, whatever you want to come up with. So this is your net. Uh, okay, but then every school better be doing that or you're at a recruiting disadvantage. Right. right. I understand. I understand that. Okay, so now that's that. a whole nother thing. Now you're trying to get 60 schools to agree upon. Yeah, I, I know. And it's just kind of a fantasy. I just think rather than just paying a college player $800,000 and a scholarship that university should get something back. They are. They're, I, getting, they're getting exposure and they're making money back if that player helps lead their team to more wins. I think I'm down 3-1 on this. <laughs> well, I mean, as we've said, of all the great players that have come through this, have they not made some money for the university, for God's sakes? I mean, I'll answer the question for you. Yeah, when I arrived here, the budget was $17 million for the athletic department, 1996. What's the budget now, Hop? About 90, 110. It's over 100, or just say 100 for easy numbers. Is that, has they, have they made some money over the years? I, we, they have. They're is also that on losing the money. Of, is They're that also on, losing money. Well, that's, right? the, that's, the, that's not necessarily athletics. That's the university side. That's, that's their issue. No, I think athletics is tight right now, too. But Pat White and Steve Slayton contributed to some of that. Major Harris, well, you want to go down the paid. list? Yeah, pay, they should have so been they, paid. So they've helped raise some money. Right. So that's, I mean, they're not going to give that money back. They're, raising, they're making money for the university as well. The university is not just along for a free ride here. July the 28th and they July the 20th. Hundreds of millions. July the 28th, July the 29th, we're going to be down in Greenbrier County. Almost. Do an event on Friday, and then on the 29th, Saturday, we're going to have a big time. Big old. When is it? A big. When is this? Friday, Saturday, July 28th, and July 29th. The big question is where the wives are going. That's really hanging out there. We encourage people to come out on the 29th, which is the Saturday. And uh, this is going to be a big time event. We're going to have this. I uh, got, I got some uh, reconnaissance on this earlier today. So Saturday morning, we're going to spotlight local foods, local businesses in Greenbrier County. We're going to do this in Ronsiford, front of, up front of the road there. They're going to close the road off for us in front Excellent. of Sportsman's Tavern. Okay. And um, our folks from uh, – our folks from uh, – And close the road, people are going to be really happy with us. No, uh, I've been there. The it's not a big deal. No, it isn't. It, it's right. it's a great road to be able to be closed. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> of all roads that could be closed, this, this is the best one. This is going extremely well. This is the coffee from um, our folks at Mountain Table. And this Mountaineer Morning Roast that we put on the market. You know, I was reading about that. I've been drinking this for a couple of weeks now. And it really, truly is super good. And the other morning while I was waiting my brew cycle, to be completed. I did start reading about this because every good thing has a good story to it, right? So these bags, I mean, they're not like fancy schmancy bags uh, that you get like at Starbucks. So here, here's the deal, though. So Mountain Table, small roaster here in, in Rennick, West Virginia, which is Green Bay County, uses, is committed to using organically grown, fairly traded ingredients, and 100% compostable packaging. So this is compostable mm. packaging, both okay. the label. And this coffee, I'm going to ask this good. This is a three-bean blend, Colombia, Sumatra, and Honduras. Nice, nice dark roast that everyone will enjoy. They call this three beans before the day. Oh, okay. And it says on the t- bag here, start your journey to victory with Mountaineer Morning, the winning blend for game day and beyond. And what we really are trying to do here on the podcast is to highlight West Virginia-based businesses. Doing good and doing great and helping West Virginia businesses. So the folks at uh, Mountain Table will be there on that Saturday. The street will be um, street will be open, and uh, food vendors, we're just going to have a big time, walk around, have a big fun. A big, I might get a clown. I don't know. <laughs> might, get a, might get a big clown with a big red nose on stilts uh, walking around. Drinking a Kerchevale? Drinking a Kerchevale. And so you can order that. Uh, you can order our stuff and our apparel at episode 800.com. Com. All right. What's the date again on that? 28th Friday. The 29th is a Saturday. 28th, we're going to do something. You're arranging transportation? Other. Yes. We riding down a big clown car? <laughs> Drive down in a big uh, Oscar Mayer Wiener mobile. <laughs> when you make that left hand turn in Summersville and you start going down old Nettie and Charmco, that Wiener mobile is going to have a tough time sledding through. Go by that Go Mart there where you make that turn. You're going to have to take a wide, yeah. have to take a wide, wide turn. Wide, so wide if anybody's coming the, the other Walmart. way in that two lane, we got to get a big we're wide gonna, turn. We're going to stop at the Go Mart. Oh, yeah. Nate, we've been doing some public events. We did two public events stop. here. Yeah. Pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah, pretty fun. Where are you the 28th? Nettie. Hopefully still in the TBT. 
Oh, that's true. Yeah. We're leaving the TBT to go down and do this, and then we're coming back. Make it to the uh, the regional championship on that Sunday. We'll be back. We're going to start the TBT, hand you off for one game, then come back after you advance on. Don't screw up. All right. Don't screw up. All right. So, uh, football-wise, your boys are Blaine Stewart. Yep. 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 Football poll came out today as we record. World champion Mountaineers. Ooh, just made just made Nate's eyes roll. There it is, man. That's not good to see. I don't know about this. West Virginia picked dead last. Not even close. 129 points. Cincinnati is 13th at 202. A couple of observations. The three of the four newcomers are at 11, 12, and 13 above West Virginia. Another observation is West Virginia will not play the team picked to be first, Texas, or the team picked to be second, Kansas State, or the team picked to be ninth or tenth, Kansas or Iowa State. Reactions? Well, go ahead, Brad. Well, I, I mean, listen, I, I know there's – nationally there's not a lot to hang your hat on in terms of returning guys that, that jump. I, I understand that. I also understand that when Athlon put that quote out there from a supposed Big 12 assistant coach that claimed West Virginia had no talent, it was more like, what do you say, a group of five type of team. I, I understand that probably had a lot of traffic to some of these guys that are, that are looking at the surface level and placing a vote. I get that. I also talked to somebody today that knows their way around a sports book pretty well and said, if he can find a yes, no on this, will West Virginia finish last in the Big 12, yes or no? He put everything he owns plus every dollar that he could find from anybody else on the no, they won't finish in last. I tend to side with that. I, I mean, I get it. I get where the You're expectations are. I get where it is. I, I, find, I mean, you can play this back, and I'll eat my, my words in December if it comes to fruition. Well, I, hope you I don't think West Virginia finishes last in the Big 12. I'll say that. Give me the no. The, the, yeah, I, Give me I the would, no. I would take the no to a couple of things. One is that it me, today it means a lot – because there's not a lot of football news and the poll comes out and people are paying attention to it. You're picked last. Today, it means a lot. Ultimately, it doesn't mean anything, okay? Because you haven't played a game. So this is just, and you, you don't know what any of these, okay, you know who's coming back, you know some things like that, but you, you, have, you really don't know. what. <laughs> I mean, could you have picked some of these, could you have picked Kansas last year? Could you have picked Kansas to have the season they had, especially starting out? So you really don't know. So does it mean something today? Yes, ultimately no. Can I give you a little historical perspective? Well, that these polls are always wrong? Go ahead with that. Well, no, I'm not saying that. But so this is West Virginia's 12th season mm -hmm. in the loop. First year ever, 2012. West Virginia was picked second. That was coming off of the Orange Bowl. First year in the league. Picked second, finished eight. 2013, picked eight, finished eight. 2014, picked eight, finished six. 15, picked six, finished five. 2016, preseason seven, finished third. 17, picked sixth, fifth, finish. 2018, picked second, finished fourth. 19, picked eight, finished seventh. 20, picked eighth, finished sixth. 21, picked six, finished sixth. 22, last year, picked 8, finished 9. 23, picked 14th, finished question mark. The, here, here's another point about this, is that somebody has to be last, okay? And you could probably pick, Brad, five or four or five of these teams you could pick last. Somebody, somebody has to be last. And if you're just sort of, you don't know all the teams, you're in the media, and you're just like, okay, well, West Virginia, the, the coach is on the hot seat. Uh, they got, you know, who's going to be the quarterback, the key position, because, and, you, and neither one of those have played a lot. Uh, they've lost some guys on defense. So you can make an argument for, for that spot, right? Well, yeah, and here's, here's one of the things I've said. I'll go, I'll go back to it now, and I, know, I realize it's not the end-all, be-all, but it is a good starting point, I think. You start to go to season win totals, and where Vegas or DraftKings in particular has these slotted, you've got to go working from the bottom up, West Virginia at the bottom up. You've got to get all the way into number eight or into number nine, Kansas, before you get to anybody over five and a half right, wins. Right. So, what's so 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 are all right there. And then 
nine, eight, seven are are one win above that. So you've got basically from seven down six between four and a half and six and a half wins. So there's a lot of movement within that lower part of the league. And I'm not I'm not sold Baylor's gonna finish sixth. I Oklahoma's gotta show me a lot. I know they've got I mean they got guys fine. Texas, I mean here we go with Texas again. I'm not saying Texas is gonna finish fourteenth, but they've got to show me something. Oklahoma, they were a dumpster fire last year. Oklahoma you know, can, State's got problems. Can I don't Kansas, know who, can Kansas repeat. I mean, here's the thing: who voted the, Oklahoma State one? Who's Mike, the first place vote for Oklahoma State? How do you justify that? Mike Gundy. I don't know. So uh, again, give me the no. Whatever, whatever you want to make the no price, I'll lay heavy juice on the no. I don't think they finished last. Ready? There's a lot of movement in the bottom half of that league. You ready? Somebody's taking the field. Y'all ready? Yeah. <laughs> Time for some textual healing. DCU doesn't have to prove anything to you. They lose a I mean, you guys. would well. You They're would look seven at, and a half. I mean, wouldn't you look at your microphones are on? Yeah, I know we're talking. Uh, that's a show. That we're doing a show prep here. Wouldn't you look? Are at, we live? Yeah, show's live. Live show. You guys ready? Texas Tech's at seven and a half wins. They're four. Hold on. Now I'm locked into this. Go ahead. Continue on without us. And four first place votes for Texas I'm Tech. I'm here, Tony. Thank you, Nate. Texter Michael and Culloden. Currently, I'm listening to the Cam Thurman episode. Love. You guys never fail to make my day a little brighter. I'm looking forward to meeting Tony at Inside the Huddle in Charleston. Could be some fudge delivered. Oh, very good. I like that. Fight. Problem is, I don't think we ever, we never were able to finalize the uh, Charleston date. Because we missed wanted, the regatta. That was a great opportunity for a boat No, there event. wasn't. Because we wanted to run the doggone boat up and down the river. And they said, no, once the boat goes in, it sits there. Oh, really? Yeah. So that's why we didn't do that. Oh, okay. You checked so, on it? Oh, we, uh, yeah, we efforted. Okay. Yeah, we efforted. Text her. I'm excited to see the young guys as new assistants. But the thing I think we will miss most is Ronnie Everhart's head coaching experience. We will have plenty of energy over there, but betting we can go ahead and chalk up an X and an O loss at some point in the season. On the other hand, if they have a Final Four coaching staff with a backcourt, McCabe, Ruoff, plus frontcourt of Butler, Eilert, and DeMar. Ask Brad where he would put West Virginia's odds on a coaching staff natty. Brad, if they put the team together. I'd give him the favorite role. I mean, who's stopping that team? Yeah, I mean, I think you'd have, yeah. Probably I mean, play national well. champions rarely get minus odds. That's a minus odds. They're the heavy favorite, I think. Yeah. Nate, agree? I agree. Nate, how tough is it? You got a whole new staff. How tough is it? How tough is that going to be? I think it's going to be. I mean, be, it's new is not new. You know what I mean. Yeah, it's a, I know what it's you mean. It's a reset. In, in different circumstances, I think it'd be tough. Um, this year, you have, I mean, you have everybody in there that's been doing this josh has been there for 17 years it's not like he doesn't know what he's doing you know what i mean i think the hard part for him is going to be not hard part but what's going to be the most challenging part is going to be in game coaching just being comfortable being on the sideline being the man making decisions but he's never been bad at anything he's ever done so i don't i don't think he's going to have any issue and then you got young guys that know the game better than Anybody. You got Deshaun who's played everywhere in the world. You got Alex who's played everywhere in the world. You got Marv. Christ, he was incredible. He's still good, by the way. Mm-hmm. It's still shoot a little bit, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stays back there, just kinda of drops drops the BBs down. Then. <laughs> yeah. Texter. Hey guys, I'm here in Vegas for the WSOP. Oh. World Series of Poker. Yeah. Listening you know who this is. This is Jason in Tulsa, Brad. Okay. Yeah. Listening to the Cam Thurman episode, I love how we're already trying to make his seven-year-old a killer. Also love how Tony asks a totally innocent question, and Hoppy has to start throwing terms like Donnie DMV around. Does that, ha- does that happen often? How's it going? Gee, who am I? How's it going, Howard? What's up? Gee, who am I? What's up, Wally? Love the show. I got you an answer. I sent it to you. <laughs> Text her. Um, here's some advice for the new head basketball coach. If he wishes to succeed and continue as the head coach, get guys. I came up with that all on my own and plan to make a t-shirt because of its unfathomable deepness and impact. Going to make millions. Thanks. I love the show. Thank you. Let's go get guys. Thank you. 
I suggested that it was a, should be a T-shirt. Get yeah. guys. On the last thing, get guys. How long have I said this? By the way, can I just throw one other number at you? <laughs> Brad's still on it. Yes. Okay, so there's a fuse DraftKings. There's 11 teams in this Big 12 from 7.5 wins to 4.5 wins. 11 different teams in that tight of a window. And if you take FanDuel's number for West Virginia, which it had been at DraftKings for a while, at 5.5, then it's from five and a half to seven and a half, 11 different teams with the range. So I'm just backing up your point with some numbers. Yeah, that there's yeah. a lot of potential movement in this league. And by the way, those numbers that you just cited are more relevant for a preseason poll than that. Uh, correct. Okay. Texter, I enjoyed the interview with Cam Thurman. It gave me something to do when my power was out on Independence Day. Few thoughts. Easy Pass West Virginia discount is only available if you buy it in West Virginia. I'll defer to the dean and if he has a definite answer. Speaking of the dean, Ivan Irving Azoff is the longtime manager of the Eagles. P1 Jennings in the Kanawha Valley. I yeah, I took care of that Easy Pass thing. Got it ordered. It'll be coming in here. Good. Speaking of, but you did have to send in one back. Send the other one back. I send the, I put that in the mail today down there, Star City Post. Free office. returns, or are you on the hook for the postage? I paid the five bucks. <laughs> guy, at the, by the way, the postal guy at the Star City Post Office. Yeah. Off the chart, nice customer service. Oh, good. Really good. Really good customer well, service. Why did you buy one in New York? I mean, because I was in New York and I thought I always wanted to get one of these. I didn't. Fine. I didn't have any idea that you got a discount if you were in West Virginia and bought it. No big deal. Okay, you took care of it. Matthew and Boone Matthew County. Throw a fuss like you normally do. Matthew and Boone County. I've been efforting lately to get some of that three guys coffee. Hope it's as good as the interview with Cam was this past week. Now that two of the three guys have their own theme, will Tony get his own next, and will he come out at an event like Ric Flair? Yeah, it'd be nice. Good Ric Flair reference. Uh, Dino in Morgantown writes, "Ciao, Amici. I ordered my three guys merch last week. One efforting tea." A Kerchevel hat and a sticker, yes, set for my Yeti cooler. Got to tell you, shipping is a little slow, but I'm excited to receive and display. Also, I'm a big event T-shirt guy as well. Brad, you talked about this. One secret about big events. You can go to the same knockoff T-shirts outside for half the price when you're walking or stuck in traffic when you're leaving. My favorites are the Pearl Jam and Pittsburgh T-shirt from 1996 and my West Virginia NIT basketball championship shirt in 2007. That's one where they spelled it wrong. Chow, Dino what? in Morgantown. They spelled West Virginia wrong on the NIT championship T-shirt at Madison Square Garden. You don't remember misspelling. that? You don't remember that? Misspelling. Yeah. How do they do that? Oh, they act yeah. in they, Yeah. You know, Final Four, post-Final Four is a good time to buy their merch, just like the after the concert. After the Final Four, they had some great deals back in 2010. Over there. Yeah. I'm with him, though. I'm a big event T-shirt Well, sucker. you said that last show. Happy Fourth. Saw this at the Huntington Beach Fireworks, and I thought of you guys. Take a look there. Big thing, ice cream, Reese's, Snickers. I'm still re researching. Whoa. Hoppy, this is the gentleman that sent us the gummies from Colorado. He's, oh. now, mo he's now moved to uh, California. He says, I'm still re researching next Hoppy package. I'll be there before Penn State kick. Signed by Frank from Huntington Beach, formerly from Boulder, Colorado. He's hitting all the hot spots. Yeah. Uh, texter gentleman Logan from beautiful Greenbrier County wanted us to know that if uh, they got a movie theater down there in Greenbrier County, he says, when we're down there in Lewisburg, you can watch Indiana Jones and Oppenheimer. They'll be playing then, just in case you guys want to catch a movie while we're down there. Yeah, good to know. Thank you. Texter, hey guys, looking ahead to the basketball season, past the transfer portal drama. Could spreads set some lines on how Coach Eilert will be dressed on the sideline? Could we see... Kerchevale, the new coffee brand, gets some signage on a potential eyelet pullover from a, like a NASCAR driver, <laughs> hoping to hear efforting Allen and Morgantown. Nate can win. I don't think – Josh won't go suit, will he? Josh will go suit. Ooh, you think? Yeah. Ooh. Do you really? Yeah. I don't think he will. Why? I he won't go those nice quarter zip pullovers they were I wearing last year? I that was a good what, look. I think that – those coaches are not going to – if he's going to wear a suit, you know the rest of the guys got to wear a suit. Those guys aren't going to wear suits. They don't need to go back to suits. They're going to no go – quarter zip. Hey, dude, you're overseas. Put a suit on. They wear a suit overseas. Wow. But everything's Italian everything's become quarter zip here. I'm just saying. Across the board, it's been quarter zip. Everyone's wearing quarter zips. Suits look good. Well, you don't tell us. We're, I mean, that we now, work at it. Now pick them. Hey, 
The line's now pick him. <laughs> Did you hear what he said, <laughs> Brad? Quarter zip was going to be a heavy favorite. Got a sharp sitting next to me. Got to go pick him. Got to take a bet on the other side. Did you hear what he no said? Way. He said, suits look good. I mean, we work at a clothing store. I know. I'm I just mean, saying. Oh, speaking of that. What? Hold on. I got a couple shout outs. Each of the last two times I've been there in my shift at Daniels. Where, Daniels? Yeah. Hope you know I do shifts, sir. Yes, I know you do. Okay, two. The most recent, Jesse Cotter from Houston was in. Very Houston, nice. Houston, Texas? Houston, Texas, visiting. Wow. Morgantown High, WVU grad. Back in town, he was visiting. Stops every year, gets his stuff. We spoke. Each of the last two guys, Hop, I was over. I was actually folding. I, I look over. I look over, and Jesse standing in the Jesse standing in the the aisle. Tom Clegg also did this. Tom from New Martinsville, of course. He was in getting fitted for his daughter was having a wedding. Oh. So both of this happened two separate occasions. Last two shifts at Daniel's. I'm folding same section. I look over, and they're standing there. Jesse most recently, and <laughs> Tom earlier. So I'm folding, and Jesse, like I look over, and Jesse got a big smile. He goes, "You actually do work here." <laughs> and, and I kind of chuckled, and he goes, I thought that was a joke. And I said, not, not only not a joke, you see me folding. I'm yeah. not just standing here. No jokes on this show. I was folding. Fold. I said, do you need me to do a mannequin here, show you how to do a mannequin? So, very how, nice. How Jesse do you do the, How do you do the long sleeve shirt and not and keep it from wrinkling? There's a whole process. you got to fold them in, so lay it down flat, fold the one side, fold the other side, I can't, fold the bottom yeah, up. Yeah, but I do that, but I can't. That's a lot of work. You gotta lay it down flat. You can't be in a hurry. You gotta just take your time. Yeah, I can't get that right. Yeah, he's Same gonna have the golf shirt. I'll bring it in. Have you show me? Fold it in. Peter Malarcher, fold it in. Fold it. Well, down. that's nice. That those guys down. straighten the stack. So Jesse and Tom, thank that's you for nice saying that. Those hello. guys saw you there. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. Phil doing all Phil right. Doing great. Yeah, good. <laughs> doing great. Outstanding. So say hi. I'll be in on my shift next week. So you uh, you're gonna be over there hooping up until you're, you leave town. I'll be over there. You guys went golfing in Vegas or just uh, no? What, what what do you what do you shoot for a round? Uh, about a 12, 13 handicap. Well, that's pretty good. Not bad for two months out of the year. Yeah. You go, you guys, you could, you do a lot of these golfing trips, right? With all your boys we from school. One year. We got 12 of us that go once a year. We alternate. One year we go down to like Pinehurst or Myrtle. The other year we go to Glade Springs. Was I, was I talking to you about Pinehurst? I, I went to Pinehurst last year or something for the first time. That's a, that's a neat place. It's a great place. Especially, do you golf? No. Oh, well, no, that takes I, a little away. It, you know, it does, but it's just a neat place. I told you the story. It was a guy from New England. Who, <laughs> a guy from New England. I think the last time you were on, we I'm pretty sure right, it was, yeah. The guy from New England who was a pharmacist. <laughs> it's a joke or a story? No, it's a story from a pharmacist from somewhere in New England, and he came down there. Married the farmer's it, daughter? He came down there, <laughs> got this land, and was going to be like a health spa area. Yeah. And that's how it started. And all the all the houses and buildings look in New England style hmm. there. There's a little museum there too. So it's oh, we might as well hey, might as well leave it on this high note. <laughs> well ask ask Nate. It's a pretty town. Question. I was there once. Three guys before thanks thanks so much for being with us, brother. You're welcome. Good man. to see Thank you. Thank you for me. You're gonna you're gonna hey, you're gonna hey, listen. Let us know where you're going to play next season before you let anyone else know. We'll release it because Hoppy's worried that Pete Thamel will have it first. <laughs> I'll tell you as soon as I sign it. Like, don't let – like, if, if Hoppy sees that Thamel goes, sources, former Mountaineer Nathan Adrian to resume <laughs> career in whatever – wherever you're going. Hoppy, he, uh, he'll have to have, go back on medicine again. <laughs> I can do that. He's currently on a one-story streak over Pete Thamel. He's and he's and he's and he's high on that one. <laughs> I'm gonna ride that for a while. <laughs> Thank you very much to our producer Taylor Tyler County Kennedy. This is it for him. It's his last three guys yeah. before the game. Oh, this is the final one. Yeah, man. He's been with us for a long chunk of these 471 of these, and he's out. I told him he'll be back in four months and we won't take him back or he'll try to come back in four months and I'm going to say no, see ya. Thanks for being with us. So this is it for him. So thank you, Taylor. Three guys brought to us by the Burdett Camping Center, the only warranty forever RV dealer in all of West Virginia. Visit them at burdettcamping.com. By GoMart. Go for good times. Go for GoMart. And pick up those rewards, points all summer long. Free gas, savings, and a whole lot more. GoMart.com. Three guys also brought to us by 
You got to get the rewards card. So go get the rewards card. GoMart.com. Three guys also brought to us Comax Business Systems, keeping West Virginia's business data safe, secure, and efficient for 25 years. Keep your stuff safe if you're a business owner. Phone systems, whatever you need. Great West Virginia people. Visit them at ComaxWV.com. And by Lou Wendell Marine Sales in St. Albans. They sell family fun. Visit Lou Wendell Marine Sales.com. And don't Hold forget. Up, real quick before you go, though, show that. Taylor, pop that oh, up you there. Had, you show from, your pictures. Yeah, he's going he's gonna to show it right now from the from the pontoon. View from the pontoon. Oh, Beautiful wow, Cheat Lake. Nice day there at Cheat Lake. Nice. Nice. So you can get your Lou uh, Wendell good, uh, pontoon, nice. drive it on up to Cheat Lake. What are we looking at there? The same thing. Just water. Just a shot, Cheat Lake. <laughs> um, we've got our apparel, our merchandise, <laughs> our coffee, and a whole lot more available at episode 800, episode800.com. Get your efforting t shirt. Check that out. Yeah, it's a fine-looking shirt. Gold or blue, if I'm not mistaken, That's correct? correct, yeah. Whatever you need. Hey, Whatever you need. You know what this does when Nate's here? It marks time. It marks, marks another year. It marks another year. And it's just like, wasn't Nate just here? Oh, it's good to see you back. Kind of like a tree. How many rings does three guys have on it? <laughs> <laughs> and we got too many rings. All right. We're coming. Yeah, all right, fine. We're out. We'll see you all. Be good. <laughs>